Tom Mulcair joins us with details on this. All right, Tom, does McKay immediately jump to the front of the line as the front runner in this race? Hi, Morella. Yes, I do believe that Peter McKay is by far the most serious candidate. He's a redoubtable politician. He's held several major posts, spent years on the front benches of cabinet. He's a very good debater, strong in the House of Commons. He's got one major handicap. His French is extremely weak. He, he mm. doesn't really speak French. He'd have a lot of trouble in a press conference, and it would be almost impossible to, to follow a fast-paced debate. But be that as it may, there are other candidates, you know, with varying levels of French. Mr. Poiliev's French is quite good. Um, I'm personally expecting Ronna Ambrose to throw her hat in the ring. Her French is still a work in process, although I think that her accent and her French is probably a little bit better than Peter McKay's. So we'll see how that all shakes down. The most fascinating thing today, Stephen Harper stepping back from that conservative fund, which now gives him latitude to get involved in this race and yes. to decide if he's going to back any candidate. So Explain that, that's a little bit about well. the background here. He resigned from the board of the conservative fund right. and quite abruptly, meaning he did this while he was overseas. Right. But it also means if you look at the rules that have been set down by the Conservatives for this race, that you're not allowed to get involved in any way, shape or form if you're part of uh, different uh, organizations and structures and bodies of the Conservative Party. And one of them was that fund. So Mr. Harper, is, perhaps it had something to do with uh, the use that was made of some of the money that he had worked so hard to, to bring together for the Conservative war chest. But some of it went to other things, like uh, apparently we're told uh, some of the money went for the schooling of uh, Mr. Shear's children. So that apparently got him quite upset. But he's, I believe, stepping down so he can get involved in the race. Now, it'll be interesting because every time I talk to a senior conservative, they'll go through the possibilities with me. And almost systematically, the end was saying, but you know, we'd really like to see Stephen run again. So it'd be fun to see if he's stepping down so he can have the ability to back somebody else or to maybe leave the door open because I can see him being quite upset at the prospect of Jean Charest becoming leader of the Conservative Party. Mr. Charest was the leader of the Progressive Conservatives, of course, before he became my boss in Quebec City of the Quebec Liberal Party. And, you know, he's an incredible politician. He's going to do very, very well. He's got a few skeletons in his closet that he'd have to deal with, but that... That again, aside, he, he, he's an incredible campaigner. So I, it'd be very fun. But I think that the Harperites would look at this as some form of political kryptonite. It had to be kept out. And uh, you can just see what type of battle. This is going to be one of the most interesting political battles that we've seen in decades. It's so, going to be a lot of fun to watch. So, Tom, what is the background between, uh, as you mentioned, Sharae, who has not officially entered the race yet, and Stephen Harper? They're at opposite ends of the conservative spectrum. So Mr. McKay made a handshake deal with Stephen Harper. That's why they were able to, to continue working together. He was the head of the, the progressive conservatives. They folded their tent, brought themselves into the Canadian alliance, which had been begat uh, by the Reform Party and all the rest is history. Now it's not the progressive conservative party, it's the conservative party. So Mr. Poiliev is straight out of the Stephen Harper School of Politics. He looks at the economy the same way. He looks at social issues the same way. Mr. Charest is more middle of the road, but as are some of the other candidates, the minor candidates, um, Marilyn Gladue, you know, on gay rights, for example, and on women's rights. She, she's very much middle of the road in, with mainstream Canadians. That's where Mr. Scheer could not break through. He could not break away from those social conservative values that had been Stephen Harper. So there are many people in that party who are saying, look, we've got a, a, an existential choice in this campaign. Do we go with somebody who can actually win an election or do we stay ideologically pure? And uh, some of the wording that I've heard being thrown towards Mr. Charest is quite interesting. I, I lived some part of that when I became leader of the NDP because in Quebec City, of course, there's no conservative party. There's no NDP. There's one federalist party, which is the Liberal Party, that brings everybody in under one roof. And so when you go federally, people say, well, you were a Liberal in Quebec City, and Mr. Charest is going to get a lot of that. But the answer is, no, he was the head of the federalist forces in Quebec City. Interesting. Uh, stay tuned. As Peter, as Peter McKay said today, this one's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be a battle, uh, battle royale uh, probably down the road. Tom Walker, thanks for your time. Good French there, Morella. <laughs>